Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today is a very exciting day for me because I've been heavily anticipating this album for a very long time. Basically since the first Black Curse album came out. Uh, this is their second record called Burning in Celestial Poison. And let me say, right off the gut, I was not disappointed. Here's sort of the track rundown. You do have five tracks. It's about 45 minutes long as far as the record goes. So the tracks vary in length, although two or three of them are quite a bit longer than the other two. To start off with, we've got Spleen Girt with Serpent, which sort of sounds like an entree you'd rest order at a restaurant. Can I get the Spleen Girt with Serpent? You know? <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, it has these really cavernous drums. It has a really great opening relentlessness for the album. The effect on the vocal is really cool. It's echoing, it's haunting, it's very vicious. I do like the sort of injection of the punk influence on this song, especially in, within the first three minutes or so. Uh, and then it goes into this Black and Doom solo section. It's very atmospheric the next sort of section and they do kind of come in sections it's not again a verse chorus you're not going to get that with these longer kind of tracks let's be real but the sort of next section is very atmospheric it sort of sounds like you're being tortured in a dungeon you can almost hear like chain rattling on the wall but that's just the way the guitars are layered and distorted i also really liked his use of vocals in this section it sort of reminded me of like the Doomsayer enemies in Darkest Dungeon, if you're any aware of that game. But then it brings it back to the punky feel again quite well. And almost like a polka hump a beat uh, around the seven minute mark. Very reminiscent to me of like a Nyardolk, if you're familiar with that band. It sort of has that oompa, 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 oompa. That's kind of what the beat is. And again, just the, the use of atmosphere in the vocals and sort of the variety of vocal sounds, uh, especially towards the end of the track and during the Dungeon Doom sort of sections, uh, I think make this song really cool. The next one is Trodden Flesh, which I believe was the single that they put out ahead of the album's release, if I'm not mistaken. I did listen to it, but I couldn't remember it going into this record. The guitars sort of start off sounding like they're being recorded and played back multiple times through like a transistor radio. And then it goes into like these very low, heavy guitars, like really, really low, and a really sick, ominous bass like behind it. It almost sounds synthy to me, but it isn't. It just sort of has this aura to it. And then I thought that switch between, it switch to that like echoing guitar atmospheric section around the sort of four minute mark, I thought sounded really cool. Um, I'm actually going to play it for you real quick, just so you can hear. So yeah, I think the section I was thinking of is around here. It's actually a little bit before the four minute mark. Just sort of listen real quick. Just something about the way those guitars were recorded. I just think it's really cool because it has like this sort of low humming and then it sort of has the higher atmospheric like trim pick guitars. And I can't tell if it's both guitars or not or if it's just the low stuff is just straight up bass. But regardless, just the way that it was layered like that, I think sounds really cool. Um, it keeps going. It's like really riff centric um, as far as the song goes. Um, there's a lot of riffs that come and go just as quickly as that that quick sort of power chord section. It's just as fast and you could like easily, you know, blink and miss it almost. But they come and go like maybe one time and then it just switches into something else and maybe that's the vocal section or that's the solo section or it'll switch into something else. Um, there's another bit of punk flare around the six minute mark and then it has this fuck me riff around the eight minute mark. Let me see if I can find that one too. So it actually comes like during the solo section, which I think is really cool. Um, it's sort of actually around the seven and a half minute mark, um, but I'll 
dial it back just a touch so you can hear what I'm talking about. It just sort of goes, it's like behind the guitar solo and it sort of goes from like a really fast thing to like a little bit more slowed down and just sort of groovy. Um, and I like that it switches in the middle of the guitar solo quite a bit. So I'll show you it here. So hopefully you can hear that sort of like background riff. I just think those transitions like that sound really great and it really adds another dimension to the music. Especially when something else is happening in the foreground and this sort of thing is happening a little bit behind. Um, I just think it, again, it just adds this other layer to the music. Uh, the next one we've got is Ruinous Paths. Uh, so it starts off immediately sort of punching you in the head. Uh, there's a really nice vocal or a really nice, it's a really nice beat on the first vocal section and again, sort of a nice, slick transition into that sort of black grind stuff. This one in particular is quite morbid angel heavy for me. Um, there's even sort of like a Chapel of Ghouls kind of throwback riff uh, around two and a half minutes, three minutes in. I'll fucking show you that one too. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I think I found it right here-ish. So kind of listen, you can kind of hear it's that da -na -na. like it has like a very early morbid angel kind of thing to it. Uh, if it's not Chapel of Ghouls, it's something else, but it definitely feels a little bit like a that kind of thing. Anyway, this is kind of the section I'm talking about. Again, they do these really fast transitions. Like that riff is really only like 15 seconds long. And we've got seven minutes of song here. So the other part I wanted to briefly touch on is still in this one. It's immediately after this riff. There's a really cool interplay between the drums and the, the guitars sort of right after this section. So I just want to play that as well. So yeah, it's right about here, uh, almost three and a half minutes in. Um, but there's just sort of a cool little drum roll thing and the, the guitars are sort of up here for me um but it has a nice layering and a nice sort of texture to it so this is kind of the spot i'm talking about super sick. So that pretty much leads us into To Babylon, which is the next song. Um, I found the switch into this song. You can't really notice. It's basically one song. And I'm not quite sure why they decided to split this one up and not some of the other ones. But uh, it did sort of seem like an extension of uh, Ruinous Paths. This is definitely the shortest track on the album. It's coming in at four minutes. Um, there's a long switch from this weird atmospheric vocal section to blasting guitars, and it really feels like a bad drug trip. It's continuing in the background, which never really leaves. Um, so it has like this, it's around the middle of the song, I think, where it's sort of these, this interesting vocal uh, layering, and it sort of blends into the, the next section where the guitars come back in quite heavy. But instead of like making that section leave completely, it sort of fades into the background and all of a sudden it's the the backing track and then the vocals come back in and they never really go away so it feels like this really cohesive sort of stretched out gum like it's like you you know you're like playing with slime or something it's like really interesting um and i really liked the feel on the outro riff as well for that one so that was cool last track is flowers of gethsemane 
Uh, starts off with a really evil, like, Slayer-ish switch-up thing at, at around the one-minute mark. Um, sort of raining blood. It has that, like, ominous, distorted, atmospheric kind of thing. And then it switches into sort of a Dungeon Doom sort of section. It gives you those... Uh, that drum roll that I fucking love, the echoing sort of tom thing, uh, I love that. You get some really low vocals at around the 5, 50, 6 minute mark. And there's like a real, also a really cool interplay between uh, minimalist drums and the guitars at sort of the 7, 45 minute mark. There's even some barking that I found, um, sort of around 10 minutes. Uh, I did think that the fade out from the instruments into sort of the ending backing track kind of thing was maybe a little bit too noticeable. I felt like I could hear it or I could... It's like when you, if you've ever done recording yourself and you're trying to get your fade out right, right? And you you, you just click fade out, like you, you double tap the thing, whatever, it gives you that little line. But before you start editing it, it almost sounds like very, it's not very smooth, if that makes sense. So I did find that it was a little bit noticeable, but it's not the end of the world for me. Uh, I will play you the the drum guitar part and the barking, I think is kind of interesting. I don't even know if it was a dog or if it's a human voice doing those kind of noises, but it sounded sort of like a echoing dog for some reason. But uh, these are sort of the sections I'm talking about. I uh, will do the first one at the 7.45 minute mark here. So yeah, it should be around here. It does continue for a little bit. Um, I just think it's a cool interplay between these two sections. So this is what it sounds like. But yeah, I just thought that part was kind of neat. Uh, and then the barking, uh, it's kind of more in the background, so it might be harder to distinguish, uh, but I'll try to point them out uh, as we listen. Okay, so it happens around here. Uh, listening back, it almost sounds a little bit more like a person now, but when I was first listening to it, it almost sounded like a, a dog barking in a cave or something. So I'll play the section. I'll, I'll try to point out the where I thought it might have been like dog bark, but anyway, it's a cool way to layer vocals again. We, we do have some, some layering happening here, so this is the section I'm talking about right at the end of uh, Flowers of Gethsemane. I think the reason I thought it was like maybe a dog barking again it almost feels like they're the way that they're layering the vocals it's like they're making their own echo so it almost sounds like to me in some sections and I don't know if it's for every section but it's like they they took the basic track and rather than simply adding an effect they like re-recorded so like they took a vocal track and used that as the echo right so they put a bunch of effects and whatever else on it, and they made that be the echoing vocal back. So I think if that's true, I think that's a really cool way to do vocal tracking. And it's a lot of work, but then you have sort of this echoing ping pong of like multiple voices, right? And I almost feel like that's what's happening here. I, I have no idea if that's true or not, but... At certain points, it's, there's a lot of echoing happening, and it doesn't necessarily track with the vocals or track with maybe some of the backing vocals. It almost sounds like it's its own thing. I would love to hear how they did the vocal tracking for this. It's very interesting to me. But yeah, that's just something I noticed, because even those like um, the, the little barks or whatever, they don't really follow either of the vocal lines, really. It almost sort of sounds like it's emphasized in some other way. It's hard to explain. But yeah, that is the entire album. My favorite parts were the creative use of vocals, which we've talked about. Um, you do have lows 
uh, like the low growling vocals, you do have the higher pitch sort of raspy stuff. You have some clean vocals throughout, whether it's the the sort of doomsayer darkest dungeon guy, or um, you even have like there's like an ah moment I think in Tron Flash if I'm not mistaken, or it's in Ruinous Paths where it's almost like evil power metal or like tortured power metal. But I really like that, and it's given this album quite a bit of like narration to it, uh, which is missing maybe from other extreme metal albums of this sort of nature and style. It's maybe not totally unheard of to have like punk mixed with black metal or punk mixed with like a war metal kind of thing or death metal or whatever. Um, but I do like their use of it to sort of contrast the the grinding black metal guitars. Um, same thing with these like doomier riffs or the the quick flashes of like just power chords and like um breaking up their riffing that way this thing is a riff salad there's basically no um repetition between sections it's very much from beginning to end and how fast the riff switch is crazy there's got to be 100 riffs on this record in 45 minutes like it's just an insane amount of changes and like even Within the riff, it's not just one thing. It'll generally have like an A-B section or a, a, you know, every third repeat or whatever will have a different ending to it or something else. Every once in a while, it'll have, you know, just this thing that sort of sticks out where it's like instead of going down like they did before, they go up first and like really smart choices as far as how they're doing that to keep something this heavy and this fast and sort of relentless um, from being monotonous. And especially with the longer song lengths, um, that's generally harder to do. That said about the song lengths, I don't know if they necessarily need to be as long as they are, but it also doesn't hurt it. What's interesting is that this whole record really could have been like one song, really could have been like, you know, minute like 45 grind songs throughout, like the little sections, sometimes really short. Uh, where it's like only a minute or a minute 15 or something to build up a riff at the beginning or something like that. So it could have been any number of songs, honestly, and I don't think it would have really mattered. But I will say too, this album, I think, exceeded my expectations as far as what I was expecting, especially from their first record. There's, you know, a little bit of room for improvement as far as the guitar solos go, maybe. You do have a lot of sort of the same use of them. There's a lot of that, like, more of an angel style whammy bar kind of soloing. Um, and while I'm not opposed to it in any means, and I think, you know, those breaks also help as far as changing up riffs and feel and stuff like that throughout the record. Um, you know, every once in a while, maybe something else. <laughs> um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a sweeping melodic interlude thing. It could be a little bit more noise related or something like that. And they do have great use of like these backing vocals or these backing tracks and stuff. Um, I honestly don't know if there isn't too much of that. And it's just how like there's just sort of this aura to it. And for me, it was really, it's really hard to distinguish where that comes from. And I've kind of just bled two thoughts together. But uh, I think the atmosphere on this record is also really cool. And uh, it's, again, it's hard to make exactly where it comes from. Because it could just be fucking reverb from the guitars. Like, it could just be echoing guitars. Um, but there is sort of, like, the riff and the rhythm and the bass and drums and stuff like that. And then there's sort of this other thing. And it sort of hangs like a cloud over the whole record. And it's hard to tell if it's just how it was recorded or if it's a little bit of added something to sort of bring a little of that dungeon quality to it. But whatever that is, it's fucking cool. And I've been talking for half an hour on this record, so uh, I don't want to go too much farther because I'll just be repeating myself. But yeah, check out Black Curse, Burning in Celestial Poison. It's a really cool record. I think it'll be on a lot of people's sort of end of the year lists. I think um, there's something in the water in fucking Denver, like this band and Blood Incantation. I know they share some members or whatever. You've got a lot of quality coming out of Denver for some reason. So really cool record. Check it out. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10. 
Um, I don't know if there is any way to make an album like this better, though. It's something that I don't think I could fathom. <laughs> um, but I want to give a little bit of room just in case they do exceed expectations on the next one, honestly. Like, the only reason it's a 9 out of 10 is because if they do something better on the next one, I gotta leave room for it to be a 10. Crazy good record. Check it out. That'll be it for this one. Thanks for checking us out on a Friday. Have a good weekend. We'll see you in the next one. Deuce.